Welcome to Wheelock's Latin, Chapter 6. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at the irregular verb sum, which we've looked at at the previous chapter. Uh, but this time, we're going to be looking at imperfect and future tenses. We're also going to be looking at the irregular verb posum, which will cover present, imperfect, and future tense. And then we're going to be looking at complementary infinitives. Let's look at irregular verb sum. Let's kind of review a little bit here. Remember, we learned the present tense. You can see on the left side of the table there, sum es est, sumus est sunt. That is the to be verb in the present tense, and it translates to I am, you are, he is, we are, you are, they are. And it's an irregular verb because uh, it does not follow a pattern. You can see the present tense endings there, first person singular, M or O, and then S, T, most, tis, unt. But the stem to which you add those stems is SU and then E and then ES and then SU, then ES, t, uh, ES and then SU. And so it's irregular and you just have to memorize it. Sum S S, sumus S to sunt. That is the to be verb, very important verb in the present tense. Now this week's chapter covers imperfect and future tense. And uh, this one's actually uh, pretty easy. It is very regular in the imperfect tense and fairly regular in the future tense. So again, if you remember our endings, M or O, S, T, must, tis, unt, all we're gonna do is add the prefix, or the stem, I should say, ERA, E-R-A, to those endings, and that's gonna get us the imperfect form. You have RAM, RAS, RAT, RAMUS, RATUS, RANT. And it translates to I was, you were, he was, we were, you were, or they were. And of course, third person singular can be he, she, or it, but for the sake of space, I just put the masculine uh, pronoun. So that's the imperfect, and it's again pretty regular. Uh, future, fairly regular, uh, except for third person plural. We'll look at it here. Again, you're going to take your endings, present tense endings, O S T, must tis unt, and to that we're going to add E R, er, or E R I except for in the third person plural we're going to add eru so this looks like ero eris erit erimus eritis erunt ero eris erit erimus eritis erunt this translates to i will be you will be he will be we will be you will be and they will be so you're going to take the time to memorize these again fairly regular uh, for the most part in future uh, very regular in the imperfect tense we, the re, again, the reason why we call this an irregular verb is because the present tense is very irregular in most, uh, in most forms. So go ahead and take the time, pause this video, and work on memorizing it. Just say the chants over and over again. Sum est es, sum est est sunt, arama ras arat, arama sarat des arant, aro aris arit, aremus aritis arunt. You can go ahead and pause this and work on that. All right, one more irregular verb that is used quite frequently is the verb posum. Now, this is the verb that means to be able or can. And the uh, this this verb does not have four principal parts. It only has three. It's not going to have any uh, part um, uh, passive forms. So it's posum, pose, potui. Those are the principal parts. And and this is actually uh, the adjective, the irregular adjective potis, which gets contracted down to P-O-T, pot, and it's pot plus sum. And that P-O-T, the T, sort of merges or coalesces with the S in sum. You just think about where you say that pot sum, pot sum, pot sum, pot sum. Eventually that T sort of drops and merges into another S, so it becomes posum. And so this is the irregular verb posum, meaning to be able. Now here's the form. We're basically going to take a P-O-T and add it to sum. So P-O-T sum, P-O-T S, P-O-T est, P-O-T sumus, P-O-T estis, P-O-T sunt. But here's the thing. It's with the S in sum, the S in sumus, and the S in sunt that you're going to have the T in put is going to merge into an S. And so that's going to change it to this it's going to be pos sum potes potest pos sumus potestus pos sunt and that'll give us the final form here when we add them together posum potest potest 
Posumus potestis posunt. This translates to I am able, you are able, he, she, or it is able, we are able, you are, are able, they are able. Again, you can also translate this I can, you can, he, she, or it can, we can, you all can, and they can. So again, this is an irregular form. You just need to memorize it. And I just kind of have this thing I give to students to help them remember. They have a have a tendency to kind of forget does the the t stay when it's with an s or does it stay with the e and so i kind of help help them uh just remember this if it begins with an e go with a t so for instance second person singular if it begins with an e s begins with an e then go with the t -T, p-o-t so you have potest if it begins with an e third person singular est go with the t so it's potest and again, second person, plural, if it begins with an E, estus, then go with the T, potestus. So that's just a little mnemonic device that I use with some of my students. Some students find it helpful. You're welcome to use it if you would like. So here are the forms in present, imperfect, and future. And I think you're going to find it pretty regular again in imperfect and future. So again, posum, potest, potest, posumus, potestus, posun in present tense. In the imperfect, you're going to take the imperfect form of sum, which we just learned, aramarasarat, aramasaratsarant, and add the P-O-T. Notice all of these forms begin with an E, aramarasarat, etc. So all of the forms uh, are going to start with the P-O-T. So potaram, potaras, potarat, potaramus, potaratis, potarant. And this translates to the imperfect, I was able, you were able, he was able, we were able, you all were able and they were able. That's the imperfect tense for posum. And again, future, we're going to take that P-O-T and add it to the future forms of the irregular verb sum. So it's ro, aris, arit, remus, aritis, arunt. And again, all of those begin with an E, so we're going to go with a T, P-O-T on all of them. So we end up with potero, poris, porit, poremus, poritis, porunt. And this translates to, I will be able, you will be able, he will be able, we will be able, you all will be able, and they will be able. So this is your irregular verb posum in present, imperfect, and future tenses. I'd encourage you to pause here and work on saying these chants over and over again until you feel like you've got them. Uh, I find that writing them out helps as well. So you might write them down several times, not just say it, uh, but write them down several times, and that'll help you hold on to the information. Now let's go on to the last concept that chapter 6 has for us. It's called the complementary infinitive. There are some verbs that require infinitive in order to complete the meaning or the thought. A couple of them that are fairly common, there are others, but very common. Again, posum, we just learned. Debeo, there should be a macron over that E in debeo. And then audeo. Posum, of course, means I am able. And, and that's an incomplete thought. If you were to just say, I am able, you somebody, the audience, the listener, would be waiting for you to finish the sentence. I am able to run. I am able to dance. I am able to study. So it needs a complementary infinitive. Debo uh, also means uh, uh, I ought. And that's also a, a comp- uh, requires a complementary infinitive. It's incomplete. You would say, I ought. I ought to study. I ought to go now. So it needs a, a, a complementary infinitive to complete its thought. And then finally, audeo, which means to dare. And again, you dare. You would say you dare to, I don't know, you dare to challenge me. You dare to leave. You dare to come in front of me. Uh, that would require a complementary infinitive. And so uh, here's a couple of examples in Latin, rex, potest, superari, romam. The king, Rex, is able, potest, the king, he is able, superari, to conquer Rome. The king is able to conquer Rome. Next example, de, de bes, consorari, pecuniam, tuam. De bes, you ought, consorari, to save uh, your money, tuam, pecuniam. You ought to save your money. So those are examples of complementary infinitives. So anytime you see posum or debao or adao, Look for that com- that completing thought. And by the way, it's just a little hint uh, to spell complementary. Don't confuse it with complement, C-O-M-P-L-I. But notice this is C-O-M-P-L-E, complement. Uh, we get the idea of complete, complete. And so these infinitives are needed to complete the meaning or thought of these verbs. Take the time to work on your vocabulary, and we'll see you at the next class.